Today we're going to talk about mixed strategy Nash equilibria and whether or not they're evolutionarily stable. Remember, all evolutionarily stable strategies are Nash equilibria, but not all Nash equilibria are evolutionarily stable. And to, to tell you what I mean by stability, consider these two simple diagrams. This is a rock at the bottom of a valley, and this is a rock at the top of a mountain. Now this is stable to sort of external winds. You've got a rock at the bottom of a valley and there's winds that push it up, well, it'll come back down again, you know? In contrast, if there's a rock that's balanced at the very tip of a mountain and there's winds, it's eventually gonna fall off to one side or the other. So even though maybe with no winds, if at the moment both rocks are, are you know, are gonna stay where they are, you add a little bit of change, a little bit of an earthquake, some wind, this one will stay the same, but this one will, will, will fall to one side. Now in terms of evolution, the wind is going to be mutations. Mutations are, the, are change, they, they mess up the system a little bit. And a system is stable if when you push it a little bit, it goes back to where it was. It's unstable if you push it a little bit, it rolls first slowly, but then faster, 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 and goes whoosh, all the way down. Now, of course, for this system, right, if you had enough wind, it could go all the way over, but that's, that's not gonna happen if, you know, in evolutionary terms. There's only gonna be a few mutations, so it can push it up a little bit, but it's, there's never gonna be enough to get you way over here. All right, let's now consider this in the context of a coordination game. So here is a simple coordination game. And of course the Nash equilibria, you know, A is a Nash equilibria, everyone plays A, everyone plays B is a Nash equilibria. There's also a Nash equilibria where you play A half the time and B half the time, right? You can see that if, if he's playing A half the time and B half the time, if I play A, my average payoff is is 1.5, and if I play B, my average payoff is 1.5, and the game is, is completely symmetric. So let's first see, is this, is everyone play A, is that evolutionarily stable? Well, yeah, yeah it is, because if everyone's playing A, right, and a, a mutant B is born, that mutant B is gonna do terribly, because it's almost certainly gonna, you know, it's almost certainly gonna play against um, an A and, and, and do very badly. Similarly, you know, in an evolutionary, an evolutionary equilibrium where everyone plays B, that's also stable because, you know, if, if everyone is B except for a few mutants, well, most of the Bs will play against another B and get three, but most of the mutants will play, you know, against a B and they'll mutant A's and they'll get zero. So this Nash equilibrium is stable and this Nash equilibrium is stable. Now let's consider whether the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium is stable. And by mixed strategy Nash equilibria, I'm going to mean we'll have a trillion creatures with the play A gene and a trillion creatures with the play B gene. So imagine there's a vat of bacteria. One trillion of, of the bacteria have a play A gene and one trillion of the bacteria have a play B gene. And your score determines um, how successful you are at passing on your genes to the next generation or, or how many children you have, if, if indeed bacteria have children. I, I don't really know the proper terminology there. All right. Now, if there's a trillion A's and a trillion B's, the advantage to being an A is the same as being a B. But in, there's gonna be a generation in which there's more A's than B's or more B's than A's. I mean, yeah, it's possible that, you know, there, there'll be some mutations and the same number that flips here will flip here. But, you know, mutation is random and, you know, you flip a coin 10 times, it doesn't always come up heads five times. In fact, it probably, probably won't. So, there will be a generation in which, you know, a few more A's than, a few more, there's a few more A's than B's or a few more B's than A's. Now, once that happens, let's say there are a few more A's than B's in our next generation. Well, now there's an advantage to being an A over a B. Now, the A's will have a slightly higher expected payoff. So you'd expect in the next generation there to be even more A's, but then the advantage to being an A goes up. The more A's there are, the greater the advantage there is to being an A. And so, you know, as there are more A's that are, that are in the next generation, the advantage to being an A keeps going up and up and up. And as it, you know, as the number of A's goes up, the advantage to being an A goes up. And eventually, this, you know, pretty much everyone will be an A except for a few mutants. So this, the ball will roll all the way down the edge. Similarly, if, you know, we started out equal, but there were a few more B's that were born, 
than A's in the next generation, the advantage of being a B would be higher than an A. You'd expect in the generation after that, there to be even more B's and more B's and still sh until everyone was a B. Now, to go back to our prediction, if we started with a VAT that had a trillion A's and a trillion B's and they were playing this game, I think you could predict, come back in 20,000 generations, you know, it, it won't be, you won't have a mix. It'll be all A's or all B's with, of course, always a few mutations. So I say that means diversity is bad. This is a game where diversity is bad. Diversity is bad means you want to be with people like you, right? If everyone is an A in this game, you want to be an A. If everyone is a B in this game, you want to be a B. In general, if you're looking as to whether a mixed strategy Nash equilibria is stable or not, if diversity is bad, it's not stable. If diversity is bad, you're, you're, you know, if there's a little bit of disturbance, the mutations will push you to an extreme. Okay. Let's take a game, though, where the mixed strategy Nash equilibria is stable or diversity is good. Now, here is sort of a, a, a chicken game. You can imagine there's, there's, two, there's two things you can do. You can fight or you can not fight. So the two randomly selected people will come together and they're going to have a gene. They're either, they're, some people are macho and they've always got to fight, you know, unless the other person backs down, or they're wimps, at which point they'll, they'll run away if someone's going to fight them. So, you, you know, you can think of this as like, you know, macho guys like a bully and the bully, you know, if two bullies go up against each other, they're going to fight. And that's the worst thing that can happen, right? The worst payoff you get is the zero. That's where two bullies go up and they, they fight. The best thing that can happen is if you're a macho bully and you run into a wimp, you're like, hey, give me your lunch money. You know, you get three, you know, yay for you. Um, then, you know, the second best outcome is, is two wimps, you know, they... They walk into each other and they say, hi, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. I respect your rights. Oh, and I respect your rights. Good. Yay, yay. They don't get any other one's extra lunch money, but, you know, they still get a nice payoff of two. And then the second to worst thing that can happen is that you're a wimp and a bully comes up to you and says, give me your money. And you, you, just, you give him your money, right? It, it's you know, better for you than fighting. So in this game, um, there is a mixed strategy Nash equilibria of one half, one half, okay? Where you, f you fight half a time and don't fight half a time. Let's just verify that. So remember, for there to be a mixed strategy Nash equilibria, I've gotta um, have equal expected payoffs from, from doing any of my pure strategies. So if the other guy's gonna fight half the time and not fight half a time, if I fight, my average payoff is one half times zero plus one half times three, which is 1.5. If I don't fight, my average payoff is one half times one plus one half times two, which is also 1.5. So the mixed strategy Nash equilibria is, exists where everyone fights half the time and doesn't fight half the time, okay? So that, that's sort of the equivalent of saying, you know, there's one trillion have the macho gene and one trillion have the wimp gene. Or, you know, basically there's, you play against a randomly selected opponent, there's a 50% chance you'll play against someone who's gonna fight you because they're macho, and a 50% chance you'll play against someone who, who doesn't fight, who won't fight you. Now, I'm gonna make an argument, mostly verbal argument, that this is a diversity of good game. This is a game where things are stable. That's because, think what kind of gene do you want? Now imagine, you know, forget this for a second. You're trying to decide, okay, I get to pick the, the gene for my kids. And you know, I just want my kids to get a high payoff. You know, if they wouldn't bother me morally if they're a bully or if they ran away. I just care about their payoff. So, you know, you don't know about this. What would you say? Well, you'd say, okay, if you know what, if this is a world where almost everyone is macho, well, I want my kid to, to run away. I want my, my kid to be a wimp, right? Because if you know what, almost everyone is macho, well, you're much better off being a wimp. But if it's a world where almost everyone's a wimp, you'd rather be macho. So you see, diversity is good in this kind of game. Because you know, the worst outcome is where two macho guys get together because they'll fight and they'll hurt each other. And they won't get any payoff, they won't get any food. So diversity is good because if most people are macho, you wanna be a wimp. Whereas if most people are wimps, you wanna be macho. So at exactly one half, one half, right? These equal, being a macho or a wimp on average will give you the same payoff. But 
What happens if through mutations a few more machos are born? Well, because diversity is good, if a few more machos are born because of mutations, now the advantage to being a wimp will exceed the advantage to being a macho. So again, few more machos are born. So let's say this is the macho direction. Oh, but now there's an advantage to being a wimp. That'll roll the ball back. And if more wimps are born, well, now there's an advantage to being macho. So the payoffs here, because diversity is good, they're going to push you back. If there's, you know, if there's one generation, there's significantly, you know, there's, there's more machos than wimps. The generation after that, the wimps will have an advantage. I sort of, this is kind of superficial evolutionary psychology, but this might tell us something about human communities, that you really can't have communities in which everyone is a wimp, because then if some kid is born as a psychopath who just goes around and takes everything, you know, boy, he'll do really well, he'll have a lot of kids, you know, he'll pass on his psychopath genes to his kids. But you also won't have a successful community where everyone is really macho, because then someone will have kids who just, who don't play that game, who hide, and you know, everyone else will be fighting and hurting each other, and the kid will have to give up his lunch money, but he'll have a lot less bruises, he's more likely to survive, and he'll pass on those genes. So it, it, you know, this is, again, very crude evolutionary psychology, but this game might be telling us that it, it, we have to be playing mixed strategies as to whether, you know, we're, we're, mach, whether we're, we're, we're macho or wimpy, whether we pick fights and you know, try to take things from other people or, or we run away, because that's the only equilibrium. All right, thank you.